Hey guys, Tim here from Boogie Snail Mushroom. Hope you're having a very great day. So in this video, I speak about how I master a heavy rock track completely in the box. Um, I'm covering some fundamental tools and mastering techniques you may apply to master your own tracks in this genre. So before we start, please remember, if you have a mix that you need mastered, request a quote at bsmastering.com and uh, receive 50% of your first order. I would also very much appreciate, guys, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell to support my channel. It helps me to bring more videos. And now, let's get started. <laughs> Today I have this uh, Viking uh, metal track and uh, Viking metal is a style of a, a heavy metal music with origins in black metal and uh, Nordic folk uh, music. And uh, first uh, let's have a listen to a part of this uh, track before and uh, then after mastering. Next I will show you my uh, mastering chain. It is completely in the box and I will cover some techniques you may apply to master your own metal music. For fair comparison, I carry out level matched for original and uh, processed versions. Well, as you could uh, hear, this uh, track has a very dense uh, texture because it includes uh, real instruments, big uh, Brahms, distorted uh, guitars, uh, smashing drums and uh, vocal shouts. All these instruments play at the same time and all playing uh, loud. All these uh, sounds have a wide frequency spectrum and uh, overlap uh, with each other. For me, the key to mastering this uh, track is achieving enough clarity and uh, separation between the elements while keeping them glued uh, together. In this uh, track, there's already a lot of uh, distortion and the flavor in the sound. So for me, the EQ to be chosen should be uh, precise and detailed rather than, uh, than to have a character. Therefore, first I use a subtractive EQ to remove our resonances and apply low cut. And uh, for this task, I use um, mod orange EQ uh, because um, uh, it is ideal for achieving this uh, kind of a result. As you may see, uh, first I uh, remove a frequency below this uh, sub 20 hertz uh, region because attenuating this energy uh, redirects the available uh, headroom um, towards the tracks more essential and uh, effective low end uh, regions. Next, I uh, start dealing with uh, low mids and mids. And uh, this mix contains muddy qualities. It is the uh, result of uh, excessive uh, content within 
um, 200, uh, 550 ish uh, region. As you may see um, on the screen, I tamed uh, 250 um, uh, hertz and um, 390. And um, compared to the low mids, the mids, I mean the 550 uh, 1K region, uh, this one, um, requires less attention. You have to know that too much uh, subtractive EQ to the mids quickly undermines the power of this mix. Usually a thick, uh, fuller sound is uh, folded through additive EQ to this uh, mid uh, region. So now let's have a listen to this uh, track uh, with uh, this uh, EQ on. So uh, next, uh, having modified the low mids and mids, I apply additive uh, EQ to fill out the low end. And uh, for this uh, task, I use a uh, mod uh, blue EQ. And as you uh, see, I use a precise bell-shaped uh, uh, curve to emphasize the lows with a slightly uh, tighter Q uh, settings uh, 1. Uh, since it is uh, quite a fast uh, performance, I boost uh, 95 hertz. And if it were slower performance, I would boost within the um, 65 uh, 90 hertz uh, region. As for the upper mids and highs, I'm using broad additive um, EQ, as you may see on uh, this screen, and uh, which is within uh, uh, 6 and um, I would say 12 uh, key hertz uh, region, using a bell shaped uh, curve. Uh, with a broad um, uh, 0.5 uh, Q factor. And this um, introduces brilliance and sheen to the mix. I use it uh, carefully, not to over accentuate vocal sibilance, usually found within the 6 and uh, 9 K Hertz uh, region. Please also know that uh, significant additive EQ to the uh, 10, 17 K Hertz uh, upper highs can uh, result in an artificial fizziness to the cymbals and overall production, uh, heightening ear fatigue in the listener. And uh, now let's have a listen to this uh, track again with uh, this uh, uh, subtractive and additive EQs on. Well, for uh, harmonic enhancement, I use uh, Aroma uh, Harmonic uh, Processor from uh, Ploitech. 
So, and uh, as you see uh, on the screen, I add uh, sugar. It is my favorite uh, flavor. It adds bigness. It helps the low meat to glue. And I also add uh, pepper. It adds a sense of uh, mid-range bite. And um, I add um, sugar and pepper um, to the side. It creates a sense of uh, fatness and enhances the low meat on the side without uh, sounding equalized with a more natural and uh, cohesive uh, feel. And this uh, meat side mode gives a nice uh, stereo width uh, for the stereo guitars. And now let's uh, have a listen to this uh, uh, track again with Aroma On. Well, as uh, for the compression, even though this is a loud uh, genre that needs uh, compression, most of the time heavy metal uh, tracks um, compressed very well by whoever mixed it. So I can easily tell just by looking at the wave uh, file. So therefore, slight or no compression is uh, required in uh, most cases. So in this case, I use a broadband uh, compression. Uh, let me show you. And um, I use a Unison mastering uh, compressor from, from our tone projects. So I apply a transparent approach, so to say. And um, I apply very uh, low threshold and uh, the compressor is uh, responsive to the body rather than the uh, peaks of the signal and uh, while this means that gain uh, reduction is permanently provided the levels are kept uh, relatively uh, moderate due to a low ratio uh, such as uh, 1, uh, 1.5 to 1 uh, with uh, 50 milliseconds attack and uh, 100 milliseconds uh, release time. So, and I apply has pa uh, high pass filter at uh, 100 hertz, and this uh, makes the unit's level detector less sensitive to the lows. It uh, helps to reduce pump pumping artifacts and uh, retain more natural uh, dynamics across the spectrum. So, and now let's have a listen to this uh, track again with this uh, compressor on. So, and uh, now uh, as for the final uh, state, stage, which is uh, limiting. So, and uh, you should uh, be aware that less uh, experienced engineers often exaggerate the role of limiting uh, loudness uh, maximization, so to say, when uh, mastering uh, metal music. 
uh, when Owe used the fixed uh, high ratio of fast attack takes uh, sharp uh, punchy transient energy and uh, flattens it into a comparatively blunt lifeless production often with uh, unmusical distortion in the upper mids and the best uh, approach to loudness is uh, therefore a gradual accumulative uh, dynamic control which uh, subsequently requires only relatively mild limiting in order to achieve a competitive final loudness in this uh, case i use uh, two limiters in a row and the first one uh, on the screen and it is uh, one of my favorite uh, limiters uh, it is a sonox uh, oxford limiter and as you may uh, you may see on the screen my uh, settings so and um, i use just uh, 1.7 input gain and um, uh, the next uh, limiter is uh, the final one is uh, uh, Fab Filter Pro L, and um, as you all may see, that I just uh, boost uh, uh, 0.9 uh, dB. Just uh, it's very uh, moderate. So, and um, by splitting these uh, processing across two limiters, I can accomplish the same uh, amount of processing, but uh, without uh, driving one plugin to an excessive uh, extent. So, and um, now let's uh, have a listen again to this um, track, uh, well, unprocessed uh, version, and then mustard one. 